The drop-down folder in your Squarespace website is designed to match the style of your main navigation. It'll have the same colors and the same alignment, but it doesn't have to. I'm Becca from Inside the Square, and in this video, I'll be sharing with you my favorite custom codes for changing the style of that drop-down folder. We're going to adjust the colors of the folder itself and the links inside, we'll change the alignment, we'll add a border and a box shadow, and even a fun hover effect. As always, the codes I'm about to share with you are available for free on my blog at InsideTheSquare.co, but I'm going to share my screen here in this tutorial so I can teach you exactly how to use these codes and how to customize them to make them uniquely yours. Let's get started. Here we are inside Squarespace, and on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see I have my Pages menu here where I have a drop-down folder. It's super easy to add onto your website. Just click this plus sign and select drop down, and then you can drag and drop pages into that folder or click this plus sign to add a new page and create one that'll be inside the folder. Now, when I hover over it, it's going to match my main navigation. It's gonna have the same background color, the same link color, and the same alignment. This folder is aligned to the right side of the page, so all of my links are going to match that inside the folder. We're going to customize all of this with code. On the left-hand side of my screen here, I'm going to select Custom Code and then Custom CSS. If your menu doesn't look like mine, press the forward slash key on your keyboard and search for your CSS panel so you can navigate there directly. Now that we're here, I'm gonna zoom in on this code a little bit so you can see what we're working with. And this is the main selector or code name that we're gonna be using today. It says header now folder content. Now you'll notice immediately I'm getting a syntax error here. Don't worry about these errors. Those are gonna show up until we're done typing our code. So just stick with me here and we'll get to customizing. I'm gonna open up a curly bracket and enter a new line. I'll move my cursor to the dropdown folder so we can see the changes happen in real time. The first thing I wanna do is change the background color. I just changed it to a light gray and I added the text exclamation point important because we're overriding the code that's already there. We need to make sure the computer browser pays attention to our code and not the code that Squarespace is already using. So that's how we change the background color of the folder. Let's go ahead and change the color of the links too. Now those links are active links inside the folder. So we need to add a whole new line of code. We're going to say header nav folder content A, and then we'll open up a curly bracket and let's go ahead and say color and we'll make these links a solid black. Again, adding exclamation point important to make sure that the browser picks up on the code change that we've made. All right, we customize the color of the background with this first part of the code, and then we customize the color of the links with this second part of the code. Let's go ahead and give it a border and a box shadow so it really stands out on the screen. Going back to our first code here, after line two where I've said background, this color, exclamation point important, I'm gonna add a semicolon and I'll enter a new line. Let's add a border to the whole thing. I've said 3px solid red, and that's giving a very large border to the entire dropdown folder. Now, to be honest, that's a little too obnoxious for this particular design. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this value down to one. And instead of red, I'm gonna go with a nice dark gray color instead. Now let's give it a box shadow. We'll add another semicolon and I'm gonna say box shadow and this code itself comes in three different parts. The first part of the code is the horizontal offset. I don't really want it to be offset horizontal, so I'm just gonna say zero. Then we'll do the vertical offset. I'll set that to 5px, and now we can see we have a solid five pixel line at the bottom. That's because we haven't added our third value, which is the blur radius. Let's go ahead and go with something big, like maybe 20px, really dramatic. There we go, now it's really lifting off the page. These codes are super customizable. Again, it starts with the horizontal offset, vertical offset, and then the blur radius. Then after that, you can customize the color. It's going to default to a solid black, but we can change this to anything we want. Maybe you want a blue shadow or a bright neon green. You can use any type of web save color name or color code that you want. And if you don't add a color, it'll use black by default. Now, last but not least, I wanna talk about changing the alignment. Notice how these links are aligned to the right. That's because my main navigation links are aligned to the right, but they don't have to be. Let's go ahead and add another semicolon and a new line, and we'll say text align center exclamation point important. Now the links are aligned in the center of the folder, but this highlights something very important. Notice that this drop down folder 
really isn't in alignment with the link above it. If you want to scoot it over by a few pixels just to make it perfect, we can do that using a very special property known as transform. I'm going to add another semicolon and we'll enter a new line. And here we'll say transform translate X and I'll open up a parentheses. What this means is it's going to move across the X axis. I'm going to use a gigantic value here so you can see how this property works. Uh, let's go with 150 PX. I've scooted the folder all the way off the screen. If we change that to negative 150, we're going to scoot it all the way over to the left. That's way too far. But I think for this particular situation, moving it about 15 PX to the right on the X axis is going to be perfect. Again, that's transform translate X, moving this folder across the horizontal axis of my website. Now that covers all the three things I wanted to share in this tutorial, but there's one more thing I want to teach you. So let's go ahead and add one new line of code. This is going to create a hover effect for the active links inside our folder. We can use custom code to make those links bold on a hover like this, or maybe you want to go with the classic underline. There are a lot of creative codes that we can use to make sure people understand these are clickable links. Text decoration is a classic, but again, I like font weight as well. Let's go ahead and combine the two. Perfect. Now, thanks to this hover effect, it's now very obvious that these are clickable links inside the drop-down folder. I'll go ahead and select Save, and we'll call this tutorial good to go. Underneath this video, you'll find a link to my original blog post where I have all of the codes that we use to customize that drop-down. Just make sure that you update the values in those codes, like the colors, so it matches the unique style of your own Squarespace website. I'm Becca from Inside the Square, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments. And if you have a question about Squarespace, let me know in the comments. I'd love to help. Thank you so much for watching. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Good news, Squarespacer. We finally have an AI that truly understands Squarespace. Meet Custom Cody. Built specifically for Squarespace users and trained on every nuance of the program, Custom Cody is your AI-powered assistant for effortless expert-level Squarespace customization. Available now at customcody.com.